Everybody, Mega Roller 31 back here for FSI DFS. We've got a monster 14 game slate here uh, for Friday. So we're going to go through this really quickly because there's a lot of bad pitching on this um, one. No weather to worry about. Um, there's only one game not on the slate, and that game would have been a great one. It was Colorado at um, the Cubs, wind blowing out, high total there. But uh, we'll look at this one quick and I'll get you some options because I know you got like high school football, college football, there's NASCAR race tonight, so many other things going on. Uh, NFL coming up too. You're probably looking at your um, lineups for Sunday. So uh, let's still go with MLB. Had a really great night last night. Um, I had uh, Carrasco as my pitcher on, on, on FanDuel. That was a good call McKinley there. Um, and I stacked him with some Houston, some Minnesota and some Arizona pieces and caught a lot of the home runs and um, it was a very profitable night. So I'm um, looking forward to another night going back to back here. But with these 14 game slates, it's harder. Six game slate last night, it was kind of easy figuring out where I wanted to go. This one, there's so many choices. So anyways, first game, we have Marlins and we have the Nationals, Lazardo and Gray. I think both pitchers are good here, although Gray's struggled last two, but his um, matchups have been hard. Lazardo has been pretty good. Also, 8-7 mid-range price. Um, not bad here. So neither one of these offenses I'm interested in. I'm just throwing them in the leftover bin. And I think both pitchers are viable um, if you want to attack the mid-range today and pay up for bats. Next up, we have uh, Baltimore and Toronto. We have Jordan Lyles, Julian Merriweather. I've seen some other names for Toronto also. Don't know if he's going to be opener, bullpen game, what they're doing there. Lyles, I'm not really interested in against Toronto and whoever these pitchers are, I'm not really interested in against Baltimore. Again, both these guys or these stacks would probably be 150 max stacks. I think they're great in GPP if you're going to stack them. Um, they're too expensive to take just one-offs here and there's nobody really that I love to match up just to play as a one-off. So I think they're great stacks in your GPP, especially if you're a mass multi-entering, probably even 20 max also I'd consider them um, tonight. Chicago White Sox and Detroit Tigers, Giolito and Matt Manning. Matt Manning is a no. Uh, Giolito, we love targeting righties against uh, Detroit. So I think he's definitely in the mid-range, makes a really good play here at 7-8. Uh, White Sox, I think, make a um, pretty good cheap stack. Only one guy at 5K is Jimenez, and everybody else is like 3K. So you can build a nice stack with them. Their offense is hit or miss, so literally. Um so uh, 4.8 total, wind blowing on a little bit at, at Detroit here. So weather's not great. It's, at least it's 78. It's not like 50 degrees there. So uh, I think, you know, if you're looking for some cheap pieces, one offs, I'd take them from the White Sox in Detroit. Probably the worst offense in 100 years. Um, really not interested in unless do you think Giolito is going to be a chalk pitcher and you want to take a leverage sack against them? Minnesota and Cleveland, Aaron Sanchez, no thank you. Tristan McKenzie, um, Pretty good here. Probably can get you anywhere from 18 to 24 DK points. Uh, he does have some K upside. He can give up some home runs. Minnesota, I think, makes a decent leverage stack here against him with some cheap pieces. Just love Gordon leading off. He's just so cheap. He's up to 3K now. He was in 2K range, which still isn't bad, but he has a split advantage. He had a home run yesterday, I believe. Um, so, uh and just, you know, there are some decent hitters still in this Minnesota lineup. And this is a, a very key game for both teams because, um, you know, it could have playoff implications here. Uh, Cleveland on the other side, uh, I'm not really interested in them. I think in the 150 max, even against Sanchez, like just besides Ramirez and maybe Naylor every so often, there's really not a ton of power in this lineup. So um, they could put up some runs, but I don't think that they're going to be like – like one of the top um, stacks on the slate. So keep in mind for your 150 max or if you're 20 max entering. But other than that, um, you know, I like stacks on both sides. McKenzie, I think you can play in cash if you want to pay up for a pitcher. Kansas City and Boston. Hensley, he's a neutral splits guy, not super interested. He's given up at least one or two home runs in probably his last five starts. 
Michael Walker on the other side, kind of a reverse blitz guy against his Royals. They don't have a time going on here also, but at 9-2, if he gets me like anywhere from 13 to 17 DK points, that's not enough to pay it off. So he's in my no interest category here. I'm not If you're playing 150 max, I think you can put him in your, your pool, but I don't think he's going to do enough here to have a, a career game. Um, the wind is blowing into Boston at 67 degrees, so it's a little cooler and that helps a little bit, but I really like the Boston offense here. Um, they have gotten to be much cheaper because they haven't put up much recently, but they do have one of the highest totals on the slate with the totals that are out. So I think that I might have some Boston um, tonight and I might even make them my primary stack between them and Houston. Houston is just so expensive. Boston, you get a nice discount and a good matchup. So I might go there. Pittsburgh and the Mets, uh, Mitch Keller, no thank you. Uh, T. John Walker's interested, especially seeing what Carrasco did yesterday. I think Carrasco is a better pitcher, but Walker, I think definitely is in play here in the mini um mid-range here at 8k is not a bad price could get 16 to 20 dk points and that's great that's um good for me here uh pittsburgh offense would just probably be a cheap stack or lever stack if you think walker gets um because they they do put up runs so i don't think walker's gonna get out completely clean but um i don't think it they're gonna like put up like five or six runs against them, maybe like one or two. And the Mets on the other side, um, they actually did come to come to life last night. So uh, I think they're in play against um, Nemo, but I think, you know, they'd probably be my fifth favorite top stack overall. Texas and Tampa Bay, Perez and Kluber, both are decent pitchers. Both don't go super deep in the game, especially Kluber. Um, I don't think either one does enough. I mean, Kluber might be more interested in here against Texas uh at seven four in in the mid-range but Perez I'm gonna just fade him he's same thing with Walker I just don't think he puts up enough being priced in the 9k range to pay off in their matchup uh Tampa Bay put up 11 runs yesterday so maybe their arms are tired so maybe they don't but I I like some of the righty power against him even though he's been good at pretty much neutralizing that this year so again if you're playing 150 max keep Perez in your player pool um Kluber I think definitely can be a cheap sp2 if you want to go there maybe pair of kluber and giolito and, and some gpps there don't pay up for a pitcher and then you can like get houston and some other good one-off bats or something like that so again texas is um in my 150 max and tampa bay same same thing i if you're mal- entering i think they're good but just i don't really like them as primary stacks today in cash philadelphia and atlanta wind blowing in atlanta six miles per hour no rain in atlanta for once that's that's pretty cool 80 degrees here uh Ranger Suarez has had a decent season, but I don't really like throwing lefties against uh, Atlanta Braves, so he's going to be on my no interest list there. And then Freed, he's been up and down. Um, I don't know. He's he's 10K, the most, second most expensive pitcher on the slate here. That's even if Verlander goes because we're not sure he's um, going to be back from the aisle. It hasn't been confirmed yet. So he might be the most expensive pitcher on the slate. And I'm just really not interested here against Philly, who's just has a really good offense. And I like some of the righties here. Um, I'll have to see if Hoskins back in the lineup. He's dealing with a wrist or thumb or some kind of hand injury there. Um so Freed, I mean, you can play him. He has been good, but I just don't like the matchup here. Suarez, same thing. Uh, Philly, I think, makes the top leverage stack against Freed here. Um, definitely will have some shares of them. And then uh, Atlanta on the other side, I think, definitely is my favorite GPP stack, especially all the righties that you have here. Cunha, Swanson, Riley, I'd probably skip Olsen. Um, Diarno or um, Grissom, if he moves up in the lineup, or maybe even Grossman for a wraparound stack like that Oakland and Houston Martinez and Verlander uh, Martinez is a no Verlander I don't know how far he's going to go uh, he had a calf injury which isn't um, that bad he should be able to go out there and pitch but and it is Oakland so if he is there it's fine uh, I don't know if I really play, play 11k on the slate for him obviously he's, he has the most potential for the most raw points in a really good matchup here But then again, you just have to see. I think it'd be Hunter Brown might come in. And actually, I would really, really like him against um, Martinez. Um, I was very excited yesterday. So uh, if you play that, um, it's the NFT game with like cards and stuff where you can like purchase cards and then you play them in a lineup against people um on a weekly basis i got his number one rookie card when it came out yesterday so i I think brown's going to be a very very good pitcher um in the future and we'll see if he gets another chance here against oakland which would be a great matchup 
bat wise, Oakland, uh, just a leverage play. If you think Verlander is going to be off or something, but you know, that's just more of a YOLO thing and Houston and like them against Martinez, just watch. Cause they started rotating some guys like a didn't play yesterday. I don't really want to play six K for him. I'd probably start my stack with Pena Alvarez, um, Bregman and Tucker, and then uh, see if I can get a fifth one in there, but if not, um, I'm okay playing four and then playing like four value plays or four from a cheap stack to match with them. Yankees and Brewers, Montas and Hauser. Montas has really struggled. He's been up and down and the Brewers are, um, again, looking for a playoff spot. So I think, you know, they're a really good matchup against him bat wise. And I don't know if I really trust Montas that much. Hauser are not interested at all. Yankees, like they've been hot and cold also, kind of like uh, the White Sox. So, you know, Judge, as he chases, that's probably always somebody that you want to play. He just seems locked in and Torres is doing well also. But I don't really like that there's no like lefties here to really take advantage of Hauser. And then on the other side, um, I really do like some of these Milwaukee bats against Montas, especially the lefties, Tellus, um, Wong, uh, Yelich, even Adamas hits Great from both sides of the plate. Navaris is a cheap catcher here at, at 2-9. Reds and Cardinals. Um, Ryan Espino, no, thank you. Jake Flaherty. We thought he was in a great match against Pittsburgh and really struggled, gave up a bunch of runs there. So at 7K, I think he's <sighs> piques my interest but against Cincinnati. But um, the wind is blowing out here, 81 degrees in St. Louis. So probably not going to play too much of them but i left him in the cheap bin for you to decide cincinnati makes a great cheap leverage stack against him and st louis to try the second best one but last night they were in a great spot also and they completely let us down so i think i have some buyer's remorse from some of my lines last night so i'm not going to touch them but i'm not saying that you um you know maybe this is where you go back to the well and they do go off and people are jaded like me and you take you know and make the money so um, they're definitely in play there. Seattle and the Angels, Robbie Ray and Michael Lorenzen. Ray, I think it's um, probably the top pitcher on the slate here. Uh, he had 25 points against the Angels just recently. I know he's, he's been up and down also. I know he got Trout back in the lineup here. But other than that, um, you know, tiny lefty lefty, I really don't like that. Um, you know, Matt Duffy can come in and hit a home run against the lefty every so often at mid price, but the rest of the lineup has some strikeouts in it. So I think Ray's pretty safe here. Um, Lorenzo on the other side, not interested in Seattle against Lorenzo. I think it'd be one of GPP stack. And then if you think again, Ray is going to chalk fail here, then definitely stack the angels um, in a leverage stack. And that might work out well for you also. Blake Snell, Madison Bumma Gardner. I think, I like Snell and GPPs here. He's been erratic also. Arizona is better left-handed against a righty than right-handed against the lefty. I mean, you might see, you know, definitely like Kelly or Stone Garrett or like they're going to load up on righties against him here with all this young talent that they have. I love this team. Like, again, and so are I, I completely bought all the young talent for Arizona because I just think I'm investing in the future here. I think that they're going to be very good for years to come. And they might be my everyday stack um, next year. I, I just find I play a lot of them. Their value, I just like the pieces that they have. And they just put some pitching there. They could be pretty solid in a tough division, though. Um but, you know, they also play Colorado multiple times a year, too. So that helps. Uh, so Padres, I think I like definitely like against Baumgartner. Um, Soto is like only 2-7 on FanDuel. He's got he's done nothing recently and become so cheap. Even this lefty-lefty matchup, I think that's in play there, uh, especially in GPP. And then like Kim Machado, Bell, Drury, um, Myers, like there's a lot of right-handers you can take advantage of Bungardner. And if you think Snell's going to struggle and you want to take a mini stack of Arizona, I'm fine with that. I'd just stick to the righties, um, although they might get pinch hit for if they bring a lefty out of the bullpen. Final game, Dodgers in San Francisco. Dodgers have clenched, so they've been kind of rotating their lineups. They really threw me last time I did a video. They were in a smash spot, and I forgot that they clenched, and then they came out with the spring training lineup and just blew my mind. Dustin May not interested in like his last two starts were against San Francisco. Since he's come back, his last two starts were against San Diego. He really struggled. He might be okay here against San Francisco. I left him in the medium range as a GPP for speculation. Logan Webb, I'm not really interested in against the Dodgers unless they throw out the spring training lineup again. Dodgers, again, I just have them as kind of 
Um, my least favorite GPP stack. They're always in play if they have the full lineup out there, but you just got to make sure like that their lineups are before lock. It's a 10 on 15 start. So, I mean, if you got stuff to do and you can't check back, then don't play the Dodgers. But if you are able to, or you're playing the late night slate and they come out with a full lineup, I'm fine. And we go web and San Francisco makes a good cheap um, stack, especially taking the lefties against May. But then again, just be careful because they could be rotated out. Okay, let's just get, look at the um, lineups, get you on the way for your weekend. Tiggin Ray and Giolito, I think they're the ones I feel the most confident with. I'm going to take Boston here. You can go Houston if you want to, but you're just going to have to find some value to fill in. And I'm going to take um, Milwaukee. So catcher, Navaris, or um, the Boston ones, usually min price there if you want to go there, or just take another one off that's cheap. Uh, Cassis, really like him at first base. You can also go tell us there. Uh, Wong at second base, Devers at third base. You can go X um, Xander Bogart or Adamas at shortstop. Fam and Verdugo, if you can get up to Yelich or take a Milwaukee um, outfielder one off, however that plays out. Uh, like the same stack in uh, FanDuel, I'm going to take Ray as my pitcher, Telus or Casa there, or play the other one in utility. They're both cheap. Wong, Devers, Adamas or um, Xander. Uh, for Dugo, Yelich in the outfield, figure out who your final outfielder is going to be. Fam's not a bad price, or you can take Ralph Rowe, whoever you want that fits some to finish off your build. Then finally, GPP, I'm taking Walker and Snell. Both of them are a little bit risky here, but I think, you know, uh, in GPP, I'm fine with it. And I am taking Minnesota and I'm taking the Braves. So a catcher, if I can get up to DRNO or whoever it's um, catching for Atlanta, I'll take it. I really don't want Sanchez. I'll probably take one off there. Uh, Miranda, Grissom, Riley, shortstop. You can play either Correa or um, Swanson, Acuna, Gordon, and then Kepler, if he's back in, makes another cheap bat to round off your lineup. Finally, GPP for FanDuel, Giolito, I'm taking his pitcher. I'm, I'm going Philly here. So Hoskins or JPT if Hoskins not back in. And then San Diego, Drury, Machado, Kim, Schwarber hits um, lefties well, so I'm fine with him there. Even Harper, if you can get, if you want him in your lineup there. Like I said, Soto's only two seven, hasn't done jack recently, but this could be a, a spot at two seven to take advantage of a really good hitter that's just in a slump and could break out and, and you know go on a tear at, at any point. Um, postseason's coming; he's got to get it figured out um, for San Diego if they hope to get in in advance. And then uh, Bomb, I think I really like as a righty and the utility. So that's all I have. Leave some comments below. If you have any questions, check back with all these like pitching set are speculated. There might be some changes tonight. We'll tell you for landers in if any weather creeps up or anything. So um, recently around 6.30, I'll post some notes if there's any updates. Um, if you can also hit me up at Twitter at MegaRoad31. Check out the information in our description below for FSI DFS. And um, if this helped you, please like the video, subscribe to our channel, so you know when all our videos come out we've got a ton of content this weekend for all kinds of different sports free of charge for you as always and if these videos help please share with your friends so that they can come and join our community also so i'm mega ruler 31 have a safe weekend and good luck in your contest